Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a car refrigerator from H. Calori. Alright, and here's what you get when you open the box. Nice piece of styrofoam on top. Uh, we have our car refrigerator user manual and we have the unit. Oh, and we also have this white box, which looks like it has an AC power brick, and that's it. This is the 50 liter variation of the H. Calori uh, car refrigerator. It's really just a refrigerated cooler, is really what it is. But what it comes with is the, the car refrigerator itself. Um, like I said, it does come with an AC adapter, so you can plug it into your wall at home if, if you need before. This would be good for like, if you want to cool it down before you start putting stuff in there, this would be perfect, like before your camping trip, cool it down with your AC at home. It also comes with a cigarette lighter port, so you can plug it directly into your car, so while you're traveling, all your stuff stays cool. Now, I was actually kind of irritated because when I opened up the box, I found this and I found this and that was it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? The DC cords did, they came separate. But as soon as you actually open up the cooler itself, you'll find this inside. Okay, as for the dimensions of this thing, it is 652 millimeters across. The actual width is 360 millimeters and the height is 567 millimeters. And when it comes to the DC, it can be plugged into your 12 volt and 24 volt receptacles. When it comes to where you plug it in, it's just right here on the side. There is one port for the AC and the DC plug. Uh, and it also comes with a, uh, a USB port. So you can actually charge up your small USB devices with this refrigerator. All right, when looking at the top, we see that it says H. Chlory right here on the label. And then we also have four buttons and a little display. Uh, there is a, uh, a power button, a plus button, a minus button, and a settings button. The, uh, after you turn it on, the plus and minus buttons are, of course, for changing the temperature of what you want inside. And the range is from 20 degrees Celsius down to negative 20 degrees Celsius. There are also two modes that you could set for this. There is the eco mode, which that's what you would use for once the temperature is down and you just want to maintain it. There is also a max setting mode where that's when you uh, are just turning it on and you want to cool it down as quickly as possible. You would set it on max. And while I'm reading the manual here, then the, another thing that I like about it is that it says it has a battery protection feature. So if you had this plugged into your car, and you know you turn your car off and you still have it plugged in to keep things cool um, it won't let your car battery die um, after it gets down to a certain voltage and there is actually a setting where you can change that voltage uh, but i would just keep it at the default but there is a way of changing it but what it does is once it gets once it recognizes that the voltage coming in is lower than the uh the stop voltage uh the refrigerator will automatically shut off so that way you don't kill the battery in your car and then you're stuck there. All right, well, how about we go ahead and turn this thing on and see what it does. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and use the AC output and I'm gonna see how much wattage it takes uh, to power it with AC when you first turn it on. And I'll let it run for about five minutes with the lid open so that way we can see you know, just the average uh, wattage for, for the AC part. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the DC part. That'll tell us pretty much how efficient the AC side is compared to using it just pure DC. All right, and when actually when picking this thing up, it's relatively light. Let's go ahead and see what the weight is. All right, and using a bathroom scale, uh, it says that it's 32.4 pounds. And it actually feels a lot lighter than that. I was surprised. And also with these handles, make sure you notice that they are spring loaded. I mean, really spring loaded. Uh, I mean, that... If you accidentally let that, let that down, I mean, it could, it, could, uh, it could do some damage. So, I mean, when it comes to, when it comes to these handles, man, they are, they are stiff. Okay, let's open it up. You can see that there are actually two compartments. There's a very small compartment here that is only for refrigeration. So if you're gonna use this 
uh, as like a dual zone. You can use this whole area over here as a freezer and then this small area over here as a refrigerator. Uh, but for the most part, I'm going to be just testing this uh, using the whole thing down to about 37 degrees. Uh, the lid does come with this little plastic holder, which you can take off very easily. And it looks like it comes with a light. And when you shut the lid, it does stay sealed closed. It's like a, it's a pretty much a handled clip. So it clips, it clips shut. Okay, when it comes to the actual AC cords, it looks like the power brick to the actual uh, car refrigerator is only about a foot to 15 inches. And then uh, to the, the plug to the wall is about five feet. And then when it comes to the DC cord, you're looking at about 10 feet, or, you know, over three meters. So that's pretty nice. Okay, and now for the entirety of this test, I'm gonna be using the All Powers R600. It has uh, 299 watt hours. And uh, so this will be another thing to see how long you can actually run this thing, you know, with your mid-size portable power station. Okay, I got the AC side plugged in. Plug in the power brick. All right, when we first plugged it in, it looks like uh, it automatically turns on and it says that it's 68 degrees inside the unit. And then also the uh, battery is at 14.4 volts. And the output on the, uh, on the R600 is showing right at 38 watts. When you open it up, there is a light inside, so you'll be able to see relatively what you're looking at. Uh, when it comes to like the deep areas, the light might not be all the way down, but it's nice that it does have a light. And the wattage on the R600 has actually dropped down to 30 watts of output. And that's from the AC side, that's pretty good. The display shows that it could, it could do this for six hours. But I'm gonna go ahead and let it run for like another five minutes just to see if anything changes. When I first turned it on, it was on max, and the wattage has actually jumped up to 55 watts, so it's, it looks like it's starting to kind of build up. Uh, it is on max right now, but if you want to switch it to eco mode, you would just press this little settings key and then press the minus key to switch it from max to eco. And it does say max and eco on the display. Okay, this unit's been running for about five minutes now and it has been holding at about 59 to 60 watts of power uh, this entire time. I think once that, once that compressor kind of caught up to speed, uh, it's gonna use about 60 watts of power from the AC side. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to Eco and see if anything happens. It just triggered Eco mode and now the wattage is down to 37 watts. So yeah, that Eco mode makes a pretty big difference, but uh, you know, eco mode will take it longer to cool off. So like I said, it's better to have it on max mode until it's down to temp and then switch it to eco mode. All right, I'm gonna switch it back to max mode and I'm gonna turn off the unit and I'm gonna switch it over to the DC side to see what kind of wattage it uses then. All right, I just turned on the DC side on the R600 and we'll go ahead and turn the unit on. It shows it at 62 degrees Fahrenheit it shows that it is 12.4 volts coming out of the receptacle and it is on max mode. I'll give you a close look here of what I'm, what I'm looking at. All right, and again, I'm gonna go ahead and let this run for five minutes to see what the wattage is after five minutes on max and then we'll switch it to eco mode to see what the wattage is on that setting. Okay, again, I've been running this for about five minutes on purely DC power and it's been using between 49 and 54 watts of electricity on max. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down to eco and see what we have there. All right, and on the DC side, when you put it on eco, it looks like it's still right around uh, between 33 and 38 watts of usage. So um, not much of a difference between the AC and the DC side, but I highly recommend that if you're gonna be using a portable power station, always use the DC side so you don't incur those AC uh, losses due to conversion. You know what, I've been doing this, I've been running this for these tests for about 20 minutes now, and it's already down to 46 degrees inside. 
and it is I mean it feels like 46 degrees so I would expect this thing it could probably get down to my my 37 degrees which I wanted you know easily within 40 minutes I mean you could probably get it down to 32 degrees or zero degrees Celsius in under an hour with no problem another thing I want to point out is when you're actually using a device like this it does come with like a vent on the side uh, that's for the heat dissipation of uh, the compressor make sure you don't cover that when you have it set like in the back of your car like on a seat or something like that you don't have it covered with like a blanket because you want that heat to disperse all right well it's been about another seven minutes and this is down to 37 degrees what i set it for and on my r600 from all powers it shows that i'm still at 93 percent capacity and the unit is not using any power because now it's just maintaining now this thing is empty so if it were full of product it probably would take longer to cool off but generally you want to cool it off and then you want to fill it with product from your refrigerator that's already cold so you don't have to worry about incurring heated items in here but the point being that once it's down to temp it shuts off and it only used seven percent of a 300 watt hour capacity battery i mean we're we're looking at hours and hours and hours and hours i mean maybe even all day of being able to keep this thing running with a small power station like this I will be doing a test like this in another video. I will fill this up with uh, probably some cans of beverage and put it in my car uh, to kind of simulate uh, going out and going camping. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you have any questions about the H Calori 50 liter car refrigerator, please leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this item in my description in case you wanna look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.